my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. So some of you may or may not know but I've been a pet sitter for seven months now. So since starting and sharing my journey on social media lots of you have contacted me and said that you want to be a pet sitter too or just ask me a bunch of questions about them in general so I thought I'd sit down and make this video today. I know I definitely would have benefited from a video like this when I was trying to start so I thought I'd sit down and film a video talking about how I started being a pet sitter and giving you some tips on how you can start too. So just for a bit of backstory for those of you that have maybe clicked on this video and have no idea who I am, I graduated pretty much a year ago now with a bachelor's degree in zoology and this past year has been very challenging. So when I graduated last year I must have applied for about 30 plus animal related jobs and I was very hopeful to start with and gradually that started to get less and less. When I started I was applying to like zookeeper jobs, animal technician jobs, vet tech jobs, everything like that that I would have really loved to do. I even did start to get very desperate and started to apply to pet stores which morally I really didn't want to work there but that didn't matter because none of these jobs wanted to hire me anyway. I have a lot of experience with animals, I've done so much volunteering, I have my degree but it's still very very hard to get a job working with animals. I think a lot of people do want to have these jobs so there's not that many available and I really didn't have much luck. I applied to like 30 plus jobs and none of them even got back to me so I decided to take things into my own hands and be self-employed to work with animals instead. So I decided to take things into my own hands and start my business. Now this did all happen at the same time as me moving to a town I'd never even been to before. My boyfriend got a job in a town that's kind of central to where we both come from so I decided to start my business as we moved here. I don't recommend doing this unless you absolutely have to. It's a lot easier if you start your business in an area you're familiar with, with like places you're familiar with, you know where you're going and you also have friends and family that can recommend you. This will be a massive help in starting to get your first clients but I did it moving to a place I didn't know anyone, no one could recommend me, I was very very new to the area and it was really difficult. So I think I will make a whole separate video talking about my experience as a whole. There has been a lot of ups and downs and at times it has been very difficult but today I wanted to just focus on talking you guys through how you can start your own pet sitting business too. So how do you start? Firstly, you are going to have to decide whether this is actually something you're capable of doing or not. So although you don't need any formal qualifications to do this job, you are going to have to have a basic understanding of animal behaviour and a basic knowledge of how to care for the animals that you will be caring for. Loving animals is not enough to do this job, although it does play a massive part in it. So looking at this job from an outside perspective, it may just look like a really fun job where you're caring for animals all day and just playing with them, but there is a lot more that goes into it too. You do really need to sit down and think whether this is the right job for you or not and if you are suited to the job role itself. Are you one of those people that can make quick decisions by yourself in emergency situations where that animal's life depends on you? Are you capable of making quick decisions that will ultimately save the animal's life if something does happen? Also, are you okay working by yourself all the time? To an introvert, this might sound like the best thing ever, but it does get lonely at times, especially when you have something that you want to discuss with someone and you have no one to bounce your ideas off of. That can be quite difficult sometimes. You also have to be very good at organising yourself and organising your time, so I do recommend getting some sort of diary that you can schedule all of your animal business into, but you do need to be very good at time management because if you forget, that means that an animal's not going to eat or not going to get to go out to the toilet so it's really important that you are on top of your time and make sure you get to places when you say you're going to be there. Also you do need to be relatively good at communicating with people. A lot of people might think this is their dream job where they just work with animals all day and don't have to interact with people but a lot of this job is messaging the owners back and forth and sometimes dealing with difficult owners and trying to relay a certain message to them that they're not necessarily the most receptive of and you also need to meet people for the first time so going to meet and greets to discuss the animal's care. This can be quite nerve wracking if you're not too good at meeting new people and trying to persuade these people that you are the best person to look after the animal. You do need to have relatively good communication skills. So yeah, I know that's probably a lot to take in but I did just want to point out all of those things quickly just so you're aware that you might not be the best person for the job 
most of the time it is fun and it is really rewarding. But I think from an outside perspective, a lot of people think it's really easy, but there's a lot of things you have to deal with that you might not have thought of when you first considered starting pet sitting. So once you've decided whether this is the best job for you or not, the next thing you need to decide is what services to offer. So pet sitting itself is a very broad term and it does encompass many different services within it and there is a difference between all of these services and you might not want to or be able to offer all of them. So the first service is home visits, this is where you go into the animal's own home and care for them whether this is feeding them, cleaning them and you do visit for a set amount of time so I offer half an hour or hour visits and this can be for cats, dogs, small animals or exotics. Another service is pet sitting itself where you actually stay in the person's home to care for the animals over a period of time so someone might go on holiday and want you to stay with their dogs and you will be staying and living in the person's house caring for the animals until they get back. Another service that some people do offer is a pet taxi service. This is where you take people's pets to the groomers or the vets and obviously for this you are going to need your own car or van. Another service that people offer is boarding, so dog, cat or small animal boarding. This is where the animals come and live in your home whilst the owners are away. This is a bit different to the other services because you do need a licence for this, you do need to be licensed with the council. I'm not sure how it works in other countries but in the UK for cats and dogs you do need a licence to board them in your own property and this is a very long winded process to get this licence. Your home needs to be checked and suitable before animals can come and stay with you. Another option is doggy daycare, this is where the dogs come and stay with you during the day whilst the owners are at work, again I think you do need a licence for this too. And another service you can offer amongst these is dog walking, where you go into the person's house, pick up their dog, take them for a walk and then drop them back off again. So personally I only offer two of these services, the first one is home visits where I go into the person's house, care for the animals for a set amount of time and I also do a bit of dog walking too. So I currently can't drive, which is why I don't offer a lot of these other services, but I also don't feel comfortable with staying in someone else's house. I'm very much a person that likes my own comforts and I also don't like leaving my own animals, so I don't feel comfortable staying overnight in someone else's house, which is why I don't offer the pet sitting where you stay in someone's house for a period of time. I just don't feel comfortable doing that, which is why I don't offer it. So what services you offer very much depends on what you can and what you feel comfortable offering. If you're not too familiar with dogs then you don't have to offer dog walking and if you are just a cat person then you can just pet sit cats if you want to. This does depend on your ability to do all of these things and just how comfortable you are with offering them to start with. In the future I would love to have like a doggy daycare or something, I think that would be so cute but right now I live in a tiny house, there's no way that more than one dog would even fit in here so maybe in the future I'd love to have some sort of facility where dogs could come during the day whilst their owners are at work but right now I do only offer two of these services. So once you've decided what services you can and want to offer you then need to decide how much to charge for them. So to do this you are going to want to look at what the other pet sitters in your area are currently charging. Just google them and have a look at their rates and see the services that you're willing to offer and see how much everyone is charging for their services too. One thing you don't want to do is offer your services cheaper than everyone else in your area just because you think it might get you new customers. The psychology behind this is that people don't want to go with the cheapest service because they think it has less value and you also don't want to be too expensive either. So what I recommend is going in the middle, try and find a middle ground between the cheapest price and the most expensive and go somewhere in the middle. You don't want to undercharge, make sure you're not undercharging yourself because it can be more difficult to raise your prices later on. So you do want to make sure you're at least charging the minimum wage, you don't want to undercharge for yourself. So this will depend on what country you're in obviously but do look at pet sitters in your area. The prices will differ depending on what area of the country you're in. So look at those and then try to copy your prices based on what everyone else is also charging. So once you've decided all of this it's time to set up your business. So an easy way to do this is signing up to websites that handle all of the things for you so the clients can find you through the website and I think they also have insurance too. These are websites like Rover and Tailster, although I have been signed up to these websites for over two years before I even started pet sitting, back when I lived in a very busy city and I never had any luck with it so these websites are limited to the customers that sign up to these websites, not everyone will be on these websites and be able to find you so that is a limitation with those but if you really want an easy way to do this and you're not trying to start a proper business, this may be the best option for you. 
So these websites do take a little bit of a cut. You may want to bump your prices up to take this into consideration, but these websites also do cover you with their own insurance, and that is one less thing you have to think about. But if you're going it alone like I did, you are going to want to set up your own website. You can use certain website providers for free like Wix or Weebly's, and you're going to want a website that has all of your basic contact details on, information about yourself, your services, photos, any experience you have, put that all on a website that people can easily access and find out all the information they need. I also recommend setting up a Facebook page for your business detailing all of these things too. You might also want to buy a few things whilst you're starting out, you don't need to go crazy on buying supplies but just to start out I did buy a spare lead just in case any of the owners lost theirs or forgot to give me one, lots and lots of poo bags that's definitely an essential, dog treats, cat treats, I did buy a dog walking belt and also a bag that attaches to this, that's been a lifesaver so just a few things to start you out, you don't need to go crazy but you might want to have these things ready for when you start. Also, if you're not using one of these websites, I do really recommend you get insurance. This is a necessity and not something you can skip. And I don't recommend in general if you are using a pet sitter, do not go with one that doesn't have insurance because in the event that something does happen, you're not gonna be covered. So I can't stress how important it is to make sure you have insurance. This will cover you in the case of an accident. So for example, if you're walking someone's dog and this dog bites someone in the public, if that person decides they want to sue you, your insurance will cover you for things like that. Also, if you lose someone's house keys and you need to replace them or get a locksmith, having insurance is really important for that aspect too, so please do not skip out on getting insurance. So I am insured through a pet-specific insurance company called Protectivity, and I think it cost me about £95 for the whole year, so it's really not that bad, considering all of the different things it does cover you for. You also want to make sure your business is registered with HMRC. I don't know what it is for other countries, but you are gonna to have to keep track of your income and your outcome for your business and then register all this at the end of the year for your business. You might also want to get DBS checked. This is because you're gonna be going into people's houses, handling their keys and just being in the house whilst they're not there. So having that DBS check does give them that peace of mind that you're not a criminal. So you're also going to want to come up with a name for your business. You can just go really simple with this and go like Emmy's Pet Sitting, which is not mine by the way, or you can be a lot more creative with it. You just want to make sure you have some sort of name for your business that sets you aside from everyone else doing the same thing in your area. So once your business is all started and up and running, you are going to want to promote your business, which is definitely the most difficult part. And not all of these will work for everyone and not everyone will have the same amount of success. So how to promote your business is the thing I get asked the most and it is the most daunting thing because you're starting out, you're new, there's already established businesses in your area and you're trying to stand out and get customers whilst these established businesses are already doing their thing. So your first port of call is making sure your social media is active, so your website, your Facebook, make sure these are all active with pictures, whether these are of your own pets or your friend's pets or family pets that you're looking after as a one-off, post pictures of all of these just to make it look active and show that you are interacting with animals and making yourself look reliable. The best way that i found to get new customers is through word of mouth, and this can obviously be quite difficult when you're starting out and you haven't had any customers yet. So if you have family and friends, get them to recommend your business, get them talking about it to other people that they know, and also if you have a dog of your own, go out to the dog park and talk to other dog owners about their pets and also give them a business card or something to recommend yourself if they ever need their pets caring for. The other way I found to be most successful in advertising my business is on Facebook and joining local area Facebook groups, so the area you live in, join the group for that on Facebook and then start advertising your business on there. Also look out for people that are asking for recommendations on these groups for a cat sitter or someone to look after their dog and don't be afraid to post yourself and introduce yourself and your website and your Facebook page and just tell them they can contact you if they want to. And most of the times that I've done this with no shame at all, a lot of these people have contacted me, so it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for posts like that too. Also make sure your business is linked to Google, so when people search for local pet sitters in that area, when they Google this, your business should pop up. Make sure your website is linked to Google Business, and this is also a really helpful way to get new customers too. One thing I don't recommend, because it is a bit of a waste of time in this modern world we live in where everything is online, is going around and dropping leaflets through people's doors. I tried this and it didn't really work. I must have done about 100 to 200 leaflets 
around my local area and not a single one of them came back from these leaflets so I wasted a lot of time walking around and also money on printing these leaflets so I don't recommend doing this as your first option, you can try this if you want to. What I do recommend though is focusing your business cards or your leaflets on local shops, pet shops, vets, anything like that. If they have like a notice board, ask them if you can pin up one of your leaflets. This is definitely a good way to get your target audience to have you look after their pets instead of just randomly dropping it through houses where you're not too sure if they even have pets or not. So once you've done this, hopefully you will start getting your first few customers and you're going to want to be prepared to deal with them. So before you meet new customers, you are going to want to make sure that you have everything prepared and all of the things I mentioned before are all lined up. Also make sure you have some sort of form you can take with you, there's many different templates for these online that you can use. You are going to want to make sure you have some sort of form to take when you meet the new owners to get all of their details. So these forms generally need to be their contact details, their emergency contact details, just in case you can't reach them, general information about their pets, a contract and also a veterinary release form, just in case you do have an emergency and need to take them to the vets. This gives you permission to take them to the vets and also covers you to not pay any of the expenses that should be on the owner, so make sure you have one of these too. So it's recommended before you start caring for anyone's pets that you organise a meet and greet with the owners and the pets beforehand. So this gives you the chance to meet the owner, the pets and also for them to meet you and make sure that everyone is comfortable in the situation. This gives the owners a chance to talk you through their care and show you around their daily routine and for either side to ask any questions they may have and also for you to give them these forms to fill in. So some final thoughts, don't be discouraged if you don't get customers straight away, it does take a very long time to develop your client base and if you think about it, everyone that probably wants a pet sitter already has a pet sitter and they're not willing to change so it does take a while to get new customers and start developing your client base but it does get a lot better. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video about how to get started. I did also want to quickly answer some questions from you guys but if there's something I don't answer or I've not mentioned in the video, definitely leave me a comment and I will try to answer that for you and help you out. Are there any pets or breeds you refuse to sit and what is the worst behaved pet? I've had dogs rip my clothes off me, I've had dogs bite me just through being excitable so... So that is it for today's video, hopefully it's helpful to you if you are thinking of being a pet sitter or just interesting if you're not and you just wanted to watch this video. Hopefully you've learned a bit more about what it's like to pet sit. If you are starting out, I do wish you the best of luck. It's not always easy in the start, but it does start to get better and hopefully you start to find some clients soon. I am definitely thinking of making a video talking about the ups and downs and my experience as a whole being a pet sitter. If you'd like to see that video, please let me know down in the comments. And make sure you are subscribed to see any more animal content from me. And we'll see you in my next video. Bye!